Hello everyone, and welcome back to the J72 Gaming Channel. My name is Jacob, but you can just call me Jay here. The Isle of Grima just had a dev blog drop called Dev Blog Number 14, Building Up. And I'm here to show you what you need to know from it, so you don't have to read through the whole thing. They released some really interesting news about how the fracture mechanic is going to work, how AI is going to change for the diet system, and some concept art of the swamp foliage, which gives us a pretty good look at how varied and plentiful the plants of Isla Spiral will be with some updates, so stay tuned for that. If you guys learned anything interesting from this video or took away something, please drop me a like, I'd really appreciate it. And hit that sub button too if you'd like to join us here in the Sauropod Squad. But enough of that YouTube intro stuff, let's dive into the good stuff. So like some of my other dev blog overviews, let's go dev by dev and see what each of them have been working on. First up is F. Tassaro, or F. Tassaro, not sure how to pronounce that, uh, a lead programmer. He briefly mentions how most of his time has been spent working on the new diet system, as well as the usual performance bugs. He doesn't really tell us anything new, but does mention that it's important to understand the game is going to be much more difficult once the diet system is implemented. He says here, It will bring forth a completely new playstyle, but be aware that this can make the game far more difficult than what it is now. Having a good or bad diet during your life cycle will make an enormous difference when it comes to survival. Personally, I'm really excited for the challenge of learning how to play each of the diet systems we have for each of the different species we have in Ivrima. And going forward with the diet system, knowledge of the map is going to be a much stronger tool to have as locations are going to matter much more. But we'll get to more of that shortly. Next up we have DM4, a programmer as well. He starts off by letting us know that we have a change in how the scent is going to look for plants. He showed us this image on a hipsy to show it off, and mentioned he wanted it to be more like the corpse effect. Uh, I'm all for this change, honestly, as the little dots we had were definitely difficult at times to understand exactly where the food was, so this is a good change, and I'm excited to see it hit the game soon. He also gave us some very good information on how fractures are going to work, so let me read the statement to you. There are going to be three different parts that can be affected. The legs, the body, and the head. Fractured legs decrease your movement speed, but still leave you enough mobility to get around. In the case of the head, your vision will become blurred and you will do less damage due to the concussion messing with your concentration. And getting your body fractured mean that you will take a little bit of damage each time you perform an attack. So how cool is that? Three different types of effects we as players get to mess around with. At this point, I'm most curious to know exactly how much of a movement loss is affected with the leg fracture and how much of a screen blur we as players are going to get for having a head concussion. All in all, though, more interesting and realistic gameplay mechanics are going to be added, and that's a plus for me. Amarok, programmer, goes over the AI in the game, and it sounds like we're getting some good additions. The Utah and the Tenatosaurus AI will be making an appearance soon, and the AI will also eat and drink for some dynamic behavior. Pretty sweet. He also explains that he's been working on a new spawning method for the AI to have them dispersed across the map differently in preparation for the diet system. He says here, you should always be able to find the right nutrients, you just have to know where to look. So to me, this says that the spots on the map will always be that spot for a specific dinosaur AI to spawn, and we can start very soon learning actually good hunting grounds for specific species. It's a very exciting idea. It will get the players to roam across the map a little bit more, with a distinct goal in mind for that too. Should be really good for the game if they can pull it off. Tapwing is up next and gives us this noise concept art of the Quets, explaining how their version of it accentuates the crest and that they took beak inspiration from the great ground hornbill. They also show us this Dinocurus concept art and shares their frustration with it. On one hand, it has so much potentials with feathers and scales, but on the other hand, the real skeleton of it is a really weird and wonky animal. So they had a lot of choices in its design, but ultimately chose to stick pretty close to the real skeleton, just adding slight touches here and there to make it more for the aisle. Now, Wedge here, the sound designer, goes over some really cool stuff if we analyze what he's telling us. He explains that half of his month was spent devoted to finishing the sounds of the ocean biome, and followed up, he was touching up the missing aspects of the other three biomes of the coastal, jungle, and swamp. He goes on to say now that he just has the cave biome now to create, which has me personally really excited to see more caves in the game. The second half of the month was spent making us all those calls and sounds of the Packy and the Fractures, so... Good to have those two. Visual Tech 48, the environmental artist, they go ahead and share tons of images of more human structures and objects. We'll go ahead and show off each of them here for a minute. 
Included are some shots of broken mirrors and a very clean looking toilet. <laughs> he says he's been working on actual building sets, which he says we will all see very soon. So if everything we've seen so far comes out with update 4 or maybe update 4.5, we're looking at quite the map change to come with them. New coastal regions and human locations are likely to come with the update 4 if you ask me. Of course, I don't know for sure, but it's exciting to think about. It sounds like the sound effects are ready to go and even some buildings maybe too. Update 3 dropped with the major river update, so I wouldn't be surprised if update 4 went ahead and gave us some of the coastal changes. Or, instead of that, perhaps they will update the riverways we already have because of their closing remarks. They shared this beauty of a concept art for the rework of the underwater swamp environment. Here we can see two types of substrate with mud and leaves, three types of debris to litter the waterways, and most importantly, at least in my eyes, are all these plants. Now, what makes these plants interesting is not that they will just make it more interesting to swim around visually, but Irima may have just showed us one of their first looks at the Dinocaris and other semi-aquatic herbivores and omnivore diets. I can see some eating algae and lilies, while others need to look for the bulrush and the hydrilla. It makes me wonder just how varied the plants on the surface will be for our terrestrial plant eaters as well. Okay all, that's it for dev vlog number 14. I hope you all enjoyed that and learned something new. The Isle of Rima has been very impressive in their updates for me personally, and I know all the memes and jokes about how it, you know, it takes forever and yada 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 yada. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, I guess I just have some patience because once it does come out, the update have looked great and they performed well more or less with a few bugs here and generally made me more excited for the game than I was for the previous update. So that's great. So I hope you share in that excitement and interest alongside me, everybody. And again, I would love to welcome you to the Sauropod Squad if you'd like to sub. But that's all it for me today. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day or night. And until next time, peace out.